food value. Now then there's other people, and we can talk about this, actually it's an important thing to talk about, because these things produce methane. Okay, and then people get all upset, hey, these produce methane. And so we really should talk about methane because that's important so we can take away the coral island and actually just look at methane, eh? Because the point is, yeah, they produce methane, we produce methane, you know, anything with anaerobic digestion obviously produces methane. But the point about methane is very significant because all through the last millions of years, methane was 700 parts per, sorry, parts per billion. Okay? Parts per billion. So there wasn't much in the air at all, and yet we had far, far higher numbers of herbivores previously, and whether it's the bison or the springboks or the wildebeest or whatever, right? The amount of herbivore biomass was much higher. The amount of methane that they would be producing was much, much higher, and yet methane was at this trace level, 700 parts per billion. And what, of course, it's telling us immediately ecologically there's obviously a balancing process. Nature always has balancing processes. And so what is the process that, in a sense, causes methane to be 700 parts per billion? And when you look at it, it's actually quite beautiful, you see, because you've got pastures. And these, of course, are maintained or managed by these mobile biodigesters, right? Because, as we've agreed, these are symbiotic systems that need these biodigesters to keep them as green-growing pastures. And these guys, of course, are transpiring water as long as we've got sponge and they're green, right? Because, with, okay, here's biofertilizers, so this is keeping this as a healthy green pasture. And these guys are transpiring water, perhaps not quite to the 40,000 litres per hectare <laughs> per day, but they're still putting a lot of water up. And of course, we've got also a very simple thing when we've got our sun hitting these water molecules, they will photooxidize those water molecules and turn the water into hydroxyl ions plus hydrogen ions, which then form bicarbonate ions because they're, you know, joining up. Let's see. I mean, it's actually it's quite a complex physiochemical chemistry there, ozone and what have you. But the bottom line they're generating a lot of hydroxyl ions. And hydroxyl ions, naturally, are the laundry of the air, right? That's what cleans up the air. They're free radicals, and they gobble up, they oxidize, they really gobble up pollutants, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, particulate carbons. You know, they, they are the things that clean up the air, big time. And of course, these guys have methane for lunch. Right? No troubles. And of course, these guys have basically uh, the things, I mean, this photooxidation process is what's kept it at 700 parts per billion. Because a cow grazing and maintaining a green pasture that's transpiring will produce 100 times the methane free radicals that it needs to oxidize the methane it produces. Okay, so this photooxidation process is 100 to 1 compared to, okay, this animal managing that hectare of land produces X units of methane, but that hectare of land in photooxidation will produce 100 X units of hydroxyl ions. So when they come and want to charge you for methane emissions from your cattle, you've got to pay that. You've got to pay that. But attached to your check for the payment, you've got to attach an invoice. <laughs> and that invoice is your, for your cow's management of grasslands to photooxidize all the other crap that's going up into the air. Because otherwise, you, hang on, you're not doing carbon trading. Hey, come on, this is nature. Okay, so you've got to send an invoice to the government to say, right, yes, here's my dollars for my methane, and here's my $99 claim for photooxidation. What's the atmospheric levels of the methane at the moment? 
Okay, let's go into that. And just take, yep, step, step, step. Okay, so that's the game. And, and so this is nature. So again, what, what it's telling us, and why I wanted to put this up there, as we did with everything we've looked at, we've got to look at it as a total ecological system, right? Because otherwise people isolate you to think, yeah, these animals, we produce methane, therefore take them to the wall, shoot them, you know, vilify them. Okay? Or, or say, oh, you mustn't eat meat because, hey, these things produce methane. You don't have to eat meat if that's your personal democratic choice. We respect that fantastically. But don't blame the cattle for your methane. But actually, it's gone worse than that now, hasn't it? Because thanks, that's the question. Because then in the 1990s, methane went up to about 1,600 parts per billion. It was a sort of step rise. And then in 2010, 2010 to sort of 20, it went up to 23 to 24,000 parts per billion, right? And so we're obviously seeing something again going wacko. And again, it's not because there's more cattle, quite the opposite, there's fewer cows, these methane has risen. And again, we shouldn't point fingers because we're not that sort of people, but the point is that this was associated with the USSR collapsing. And so then basically Russia's oil fields under Yeltsin were basically leaking 40% of their gas <laughs> because they couldn't afford and didn't do and couldn't organise their maintenance on their gas fields. So we had massive amounts of methane being released and that actually sort of, yeah, well, by association, I'm not causing a causal, right, no, no blame here, but by association that was that. And then that rise at that period is again uh, associated, you know, so we mustn't have a causal thing with fracking. Because as we go around and frack gas, we fracture vast areas of soils and yeah, we do it in Australia and we've got records of fugitive emissions coming up from the soil in these frack gas fields. Nothing to do with cattle and methane. Now, there's another negative, though, about cows, because if we put these cows in concentration camps on concrete and feed them starch, wheat and stuff like that, then we're in trouble because basically they're not, they don't grow on concrete. They, they're growing on grass, and they're not growing on starch. They're basically needing cellulose and lignin to grow. And so if we fill this up with starch, yes, they will produce more methane, but it's really... We're not growing animals ecologically, so please don't, you know, we're not excusing feedlot, you know, cattle or animal rearing because that is going into that, you know, higher methane argument. But basically this whole beat up about, you know, like, hey, cattle are responsible for methane, uh, it's really a bit of a red herring because perhaps the gas industry doesn't want it microscope or public attention focusing on what its fugitive emissions are doing and they can certainly co-opt a lot of people to say hey it's the farmers it's the farmers it's the farmers it's the cows you see and so that's a bit of a red herring but there's one other bigger 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 issue that comes into this but because we've got to cover all things if we look into system Okay, we talked about the oceans having 38,000 billion tonnes of carbon locked up as CO2 or dissolved as CO2. On top of that, okay, so that's 38,000 billion tonnes carbon, but there's, on top of there's another 15,000 billion tonnes of carbon locked up as methane hydrates. Okay, now these are sort of like ice, that's on the continental shelves, often below, you know, uh, organic matter outflows from rivers. But these, this is methane that's really locked up, yeah, in ice lattices, right, and basically stable. But as the oceans warm, and we talked about 93% of the heat going to the ocean, as the oceans warm, we risk this stuff coming up. It's already happening in the Arctic. The Arctic is now like lemonade. You know, there's so much methane bubbling up continually. 
but there's, as we said, 15,000 billion tonnes, and that's compared to 75 billion tonnes, 750 billion tonnes carbon uh, of CO2 in the air, right? Okay, so you can see that if, if a part of that 15,000 billion tonnes is emitted, either as methane or even converted to CO2, it really creates a major change. And so that becomes actually an existential risk to life over large parts of this planet. Very serious. You know, if that releases, yeah, we've got problems. But if that is released, the only thing that is a snowflake chance in hell of saving us are plenty of herbivores and plenty of green grass and plenty of photooxidation. So these herbivores and these high latitude green pastures are really your insurance policy or your last, yeah, you, you know, the, the guys with the white hat that have any snowflakes chance of hell of avoiding that extinction event from those methane hydrates. So again, who do you send the invoice to? One real fast question. Yeah. Have you written a book about this? Have I written a book? No, 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 no. You get shot if you write a book, you know. You put a target on your chest. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm waiting for Max to write it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, look, I mean, okay, no, we've got fact sheets and YouTubes and stuff like that. But, but the point is that it's, it's not, I mean, it's fact, you know. It's, I mean, like, okay, but, but, no, I shouldn't know. I'm not telling you it's fact, but check it out, right? It's there. It's science. It's no argument about it. And they know it. I mean, all the oil companies, I mean, the gas companies, they know it. But gosh, if they got the vegans hassling farmers, 